Hi, my name's Jack, and this is a presentation on an upcoming essay called Immediacy, an Invisible Undercurrent in the Evolution of Music. The 20th century was a time when music underwent an onslaught of mutations. The role of the musician, the listener, technology and the consumer are constantly changing, and we often talk about this being the result of two things, technological determinism and technological innovation. This essay will take the form of a historical study of key moments of reconfiguration in music practice and suggest that there's an equally powerful but underlooked force at play, which I'm calling immediacy, and suggest that immediacy is key to understanding the past, present and future of music. So firstly, what do I mean by technological determinism and technological innovation? So, technological determinism. In music, we often look at how interesting music or progress has come about as a result of technology, so that changes in music, society and industry were technologically determined. For example, if you were to say, the invention of the radio transmitter changes people's relation with musicians and the site of music consumption, or that the invention of the phonograph creates a recorded music industry and changes society's relation to music and culture, or the invention of the synthesizer, the drum machine and the music computer changes our relations to musicians, authenticity and performance, or the invention of the mp3, downloading and streaming music changes our relation to the value of music, the definition of what albums are and problematizes the value of recorded musics and the role of the recorded artist then you'd be using a narrative of technological determinism, the idea that society's technology determines the develop of its social structure and social values. It was technology that done it. And then technological innovation. Um, there's also this narrative of change brought about by always searching for technological innovation, the idea that each innovation is here to replace or at least seriously disrupt the last. So when looking at a history of progressive or interesting music in the 20th century, it'll often read like the following formula repeated. Technological innovation plus technological determinism equals progress. Um, but I think there's a missing piece of the puzzle here. Immediacy. Um, the creative application of things you have in front of you rather than reaching out for an emergent technology hoping it will alter your present. John Tomlinson describes the emergence of immediacy in the 21st century as something that will change how we think about and experience media culture, consumption practices and the core of our cultural and moral values. He sets it apart from modernism and futurism, which are about bridging the gap between now and the future, and suggests that immediacy, by contrast, involves as its core feature the imagination that the gap is already closed. Immediacy, the closure of the gap, is therefore most generally the redundancy or abolition of the middle term. Tomlinson describes this as a phenomenon emerging in the 21st century, but I think you can see it at many of the key development stages of music in the 20th century also. So, some historical examples. J.R. Brinkley was an early pioneer of radio as a medium of mass communication, making some of the first pre-recorded radio shows, being an early adopter of having live bands and playing records on the radio, and the idea of advertising as a funding model for a radio station, something which was frowned upon at the time in America. He's also a father of the pirate radio station broadcasting to America from the Mexican border. At the time, the American government was completely against the idea of radio waves being used for the purposes of capitalism. Radio technology at the time was thought of as a municipal communications device, um, and Brinkley was one of the first people to realise that it was actually a network communication tool with the potential to make massive amounts of money and create entire industries by itself. You could argue that the advent of radio creating a recorded music industry is down to the innovation of radio technology modulating society through determinism. Um, but actually, Brinkley didn't invent any new technology. He just repurposed an existing set of technologies in a new way, in a time when most people were concerned with fidelity or the proper use of the medium, um, reaching towards the new. Brinkley is changing the world by realising the immediate affordances of the technology to work in the now. And then there's Jamaican sound system culture. Uh, in the 1940s, some DJs and some MCs put a load of speakers on the back of trucks to make some money hosting outdoor parties. And in the process, they pioneer a load of musical ideas that dominate the rest of the century. Remixes, club cultures, dub plates, changing how people thought about the role of the producer in a recording environment and music. Much like Brinkley, they're utilising technology that's been available for a while a very lo-fi spirit of connection and immediacy, rather than reaching for some new future. It could be argued that Jamaican sound system culture, with its offshoots of reggae and dub music, has had more of an influence on contemporary music than a lot of modernist and minimalistic music that follows decades later, as if cutting into the now seems to let the future leak out. 
Stock, Aitken and Waterman changed the face of pop music in the mid-80s, um, and I think the immediacy of their assembly line style working method is what facilitated this. Uh, the music was created almost entirely with synths, drum machines and sequences, not in the spirit of formal experimentation, but for the sake of recording things as quickly and as efficiently as possible, um, which meant they could churn out these records at a really fast rate, using technology for an immediate radical enjoyment in the moment, um, rather than reaching for some future ideal of perfect fidelity or authenticity. I think there's a connection between their practices and Phineas and Billy Eilish's. They wrote and recorded the whole of their multi-award winning album, When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, in a tiny bedroom studio. They said this was a conscious choice rather than an economic one, saying... To me it's all about like immediacy. The way I want any home studio to function is like I want it all to be like as fast as I can think of an idea, I want to be able to articulate it. Self-made YouTube bedroom musician Louis Cole could fit into this category also, turning down opportunities to work in studios to work in his house with minimal music technology. None of these people are Luddites, it's more that they have their priorities in a different order. They value immediacy over technological determinism and innovation, um, which is often against the grain of popular thought on music technology. So as well as looking at the history of immediacy, I'd like to see what sort of questions this raises for the modern musician. For example, where's the allocation for immediacy in higher music education, which still seems to prioritise access to large industrial studio complexes and a portfolio of high fidelity work, uh, when these studio positions are actually becoming less and less common? And could the lack of the musician's interest in music technology as a tool for online collaboration be related to the lack of attentiveness to the ideas of immediacy over those of determinism and innovation? Uh, that's it. Thanks.